Welcome back. My name is Nicole BW and this is a tutorial for refined storage. So to get started in this tutorial, all you'll need is a controller, a grid of some kind, and a disk drive with disks in it. You can even go uh, start with just a 1K storage disk. That's all you really need to get started and to put items in your system. If you wanted to change up the size of your, your storage disk and you already have items stored on there, let's say we wanted to change to a 16K storage disk, we can put the 16K in there, take out your storage uh, that has everything in it, Come over here to a disk manipulator, put that in, it'll remove all of the items in your storage and place them into the new storage disk. If you wanted to speed those up, all you would need is a, a couple of speed upgrades. I don't think 64 is needed. <laughs> There's also um, a stack upgrade, which will make things go even faster. We replace one of those with a stack upgrade. See, it goes faster. Then you'll get your blank disk back. So we could place that back in here. Now we have uh, 16K plus 1K. Uh, we also have fluid storage. And it says here that we have six buckets stored on our fluid storage. So in order to see what fluids we have, we need to use a fluid grid. This shows us that we have four buckets of water, one bucket of milk, and one bucket of lava. In order to get the items out, you just click on it. It will use a bucket either in your inventory or in the system and uh, you will be able to have a bucket of that item. If you wanna place the fluid black back in there, you just shift click, it'll place the fluid in there and keep the bucket in your inventory. Uh, you're, you can use a regular grid to see the items in your inventory, or you can upgrade it to a crafting grid, which will have a a crafting table down below and you'll be able to craft from the items in your inventory or in your system. There are different sizes of disks from 1k to 64k. If you have additional mods that add additional things to refined storage, it could go all the way up to infinite. Uh, the fluid storage disks go from 64K up to 4096, and those can also be increased by other mods. Uh, there are also storage blocks that act the same way. You can store items in them, but you will not be able to use the disk manipulator to move the, the items on or in the storage block from them. Uh, so use these. There's also a fluid one. Use these very sparingly, if not at all. Uh, they also range from 1K to 64K and 64 to 4096. There's also a storage monitor, so you can have multiples of these in your base to check on the amount of items that you have in your system. Right now we have zero uh, diamond ore blocks. Once you got your system up and going, you'll probably want to change over to auto crafting. Uh, this is where you will need to start making crafters. You will also need a pattern grid, a crafting monitor, and a crafter manager. The pattern grid, you will need to have blank patterns in the upper right section 
and you can use either processing patterns or regular crafting patterns. The exact button is if you have multiples of an item, uh, different kinds like silicone, if you have multiple different silicones, but you only want to use a specific kind for your pattern, uh, exact is the one you want to uh, tick off. Otherwise, you can uh, unclick that to remove the check mark. Uh, crafting patterns will go into a crafter like this pattern for a furnace, just to craft a furnace. You can then select on the thing you want to craft, tell it how many, hit start. It'll show you what is available and if there's any items missing or any problems. If not, hit start and it will craft the items. If there's already an item there and you still want to craft it, control shift click will get you to the crafting area where you can then craft more items. If you need to make a processing pattern, you'll put the item that you want to go in. Uh, for example, we want to process gold ore. You can click and drag it from JEI over as well as the uh, product that you're getting. Uh, we are going to run this through and uh, end up with two ingots. So we're going to click on that, add another one, and set it so it'll show that one ore equals two ingots. We are then going to create this pattern. We then need to place it in the correct item. Since we want to get two of those out, we are going to need to put it in the pulverizer. Whereas I have an item or a pattern in the redstone furnace, uh, for iron ore and there's our pattern in the crafter as you add more crafters and machines it will add them here so you don't have to go around your different base to see and go to that specific crafter the crafting monitor will show you what is being crafted at the moment if there are any issues it will come up and tell you what the issue is In addition, we have import, export, and storage buses. The import bus is uh, nice for being able to add ores into the system. The export bus is if you have items in your system and you want to transfer them, we can see on the front here that our smooth stone is being pulled out of the system and into the storage drawer. The storage bus is if you would like a certain item to be in the in separate external storage, but also wants to be recognized uh, through the system. You'll want to go ahead and make sure this is whitelisted. Put your item in the slot. You can have multiples. So then when we put our items into the system, they show in our system, but they're in the chest. And as you can see, the smooth stone is no longer... <laughs> being shown in our system because it's just an exporter and not a storage bus. If we wanted that to show, we would need to change that over to a storage bus. There are also constructors and deconstructors. This would be good if you have blocks that you would like to have broken, but not necessarily have time to do it yourself. For instance, the diamond ore that we just put in there is being placed and broken almost simultaneously. You can't hardly tell. Uh, but if we come over here, we can see we are getting diamonds in the system. Obviously, with uh, ores like this, you would want to use uh, some way of getting multiples instead of just the one for one. 
There are also item and fluid interfaces. Uh, you can use these to set how many items you want available uh, in this block. So for instance, we have cobblestone here. We can change the number of uh, how many we want available to us and we can pull these out of the bottom uh, bar here. You can have different ones set. We can change this to uh, 64. We can change it uh, back to one. So there's only one. You can have multiples of different things. This would be good next to a brewing stand if you didn't want to automate it, but wanted to have the items available so you didn't have to go back to your grid. The fluid interface uh, you can use with a storage bus to have uh, so many buckets available and being stored in the interface. Uh, there is a security manager if you're playing on a multiplayer server. Uh, if you're playing alone by yourself, it's not necessary to have one, uh, but you'll want to have a security card right click it to set it to yourself and then you'll want to place it in the middle and select all of the things that you want that person to be allowed to do in the system then place the card up above and you're all set you'll want to do that for each person uh, that will have control of the system the detector is there to uh, have a redstone signal of the item and the amount that you want to detect. You can also change the mode to admit the signal when it's at the number, above the number, or below the number. So I have it set at 10 for the iron ingots. If we come over here and craft 10 and hit start, It'll take a little while, but once it reaches 10, it should light up. The wireless transmitter will tell you how many blocks away it will work, and you'll need one of these in order to use a wireless grid in your inventory. There are also network transmitters and network receivers. This will allow you to have wireless access to your system uh, from anywhere in your base. This will also allow you to be able to uh, run cables and machines through a wireless uh, network. All you'll need is a network card, shift click on your receiver, and then place it in your transmitter. As you can see, we have the pattern for our iron ingot in this crafter facing into the machine. We also have an importer that is importing the ingots back into the system. Uh, it is now done processing. I think we need one more uh, for the light to come on. So let's go ahead and do that because I think I have it set to above that number which means when we get one more, the light will go on. This would submit a redstone signal. Uh, for the gold, we have this set to the pulverizer. So if we come over here to a grid, select this, uh, maybe we want five of them. Let's hit start. And there we go, we have the machines going. Ooh, why is there gravel in there? And make sure that you configure the machines properly. We also have an import bus from the furnace going back into the system. And as you can see, this is not wired up. Uh, I can even show you down below. There are no wires underneath. And there we go. We have our five gold ingots. Uh, for an example set up, 
if we fly over here, I have a little setup already prepared for us. And we can look and see here we have uh, X Nilo pieces that have been sifted and we have these. So say we need uh, 10 copper ingots, we can go ahead and have that started. Say we need uh, 64 iron, we're gonna go ahead and start that. Say we want um, 30 silver and uh, what else do we have? Nickel, we'll do 20 of those. I have, I have the patterns for the ore chunk in two separate crafters and then each one has a furnace with a crafter behind it for to make the ingots. So as we see, um, uh, that's our pattern grid, our crafting manager, we can see what patterns we have and where they're located. Our crafting monitor can show us what is being processed and how many are still scheduled. We can also go ahead and cancel or cancel all of them. And as we look in here, you can see that we are getting our ingots, even though they look slightly different than the pictures, that's fine. Uh, this is uh, working just the way it's supposed to. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about refined storage. There are other mods that help expand this one and that are a lot of fun. And I hope you check those out. Let me know if you have any comments down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.